Happy New Year! Well, Happy New Year a month ago. It's 2021. Not so you'd notice, but <laughs> it is. And this is my January vlog. Um, this month, Hubby and I have been doing some skiing. I've been doing some skiing. He's been doing a ton of skiing. And we've been talking and laughing about trips we've been on and doing a lot of cooking. Some of the cooking we've been doing, we actually decided to try because we had been on a trip. So, hope you enjoy this month's vlog. Let's just get on with it. This is the beautiful trail through here. Yeah. Look at that little tiny opening. Way up ahead. Kind of looks like that cave in. Uh, looks like that. Well, on the camera, it looks like that cave in Bosnia. We were like, there's no way a road goes through there. <laughs> Okay, so what is this? Well, it's called Tuscan Chicken Quinoa or Quinoa, or <laughs> if you want to use the British expression. <laughs> At least I know okay, how to spell it. Okay, let me explain it. that. Yeah, um, I can because, spell it anyway. Yeah, because we, <laughs> um, we watched an episode of Escape to the Country, and a fellow in it was uh, a farmer who grew quinoa, but he called it quinoa, which he said was the way they started pronouncing quinoa when it first came to England, and he still calls it quinoa. And when Hubby was going to look it up on the internet, I said, well, spell it the way that English guy said it. So it's easier to spell if you say quinoa. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Anyway, we've tried it before in, in salads, and we weren't really that keen. We know that quinoa is good for you. Uh, it, it's got lots of protein in it, and et cetera, et cetera. But we didn't like it in any of the... Mm. Uh, I particularly didn't care. Well, I found it a little bit. A couple bit. of times I liked it. Yeah, not me. So anyway, I thought I'd try this. and uh, So we've got mild Italian sausage. We've got the quinoa in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, I've got some fresh basil from our sunroom. I will slice the tomatoes to go on the top the last 10, 15 minutes. That's, um, this is our homemade tomato sauce right. instead of using tomato soup, yuck. Uh, and if I have to up the liquid content, I will put a little bit of vegetable broth. Um, and what's that? In the other oh, kale. This is my winter kale. Now this is interesting. This, As if winter kale's a thing. Well, people would kill for winter kale if they knew how good it was. Yes. It's, it's an amazing. I've, I've picked it before when there's been six, seven inches of snow on the ground, but uh, this has been pretty much frozen, standing in the garden mm -hmm. for the last month. And uh, I took a piece the other day, a leaf off it, and I tasted it. And I thought, well, it actually fine. tastes better. I, I I think it does. It's a lot it's like, sweeter than oh, kale yeah. in the summer. That's the theory of parsnips overwintered and uh, as we did last year overwintering uh, our carrots. Yeah, mm. I, I think it is. I don't like parsnips. I love the carrots we got last mm. uh, spring. Anyway, from this point on, I have to take what I've got in this bowl here. I, I did uh, saute the sausages and drain them well, um, mm -hmm. put them in paper towels as well and got as much of the fat out of them as I could. And in there, in addition, I have some uh, mushrooms which uh, I, I add mushroom to so many things. Mm -hmm. My red pepper frozen from the garden that I'd frozen in the fall, uh, some diced red onion and some uh, they call for Italian seasoning, and I used uh, thyme, oregano, and a little bit of rosemary. Mm -hmm. And these and this, the cheese Fresh and the, basil. yeah, that'll go on there. And the what end. kind of, that's mozzarella? The mozzarella goes right. on the last yeah. 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and this goes on fresh at the end, the ba mm -hmm. basil, yeah, basil, basil. Okay. I well, say basil, you say basil. Basil. Is a song of it. So, uh, I guess we'll wait and see what it tastes like. It goes like. into the oven, goes into the oven for an hour in total, but uh, partway through... Uh, I, I add the, uh, the cheese and the mm -hmm. tomatoes, um, and when I take it out, I sprinkle with the chopped fresh basil. Oh, okay. I, I'm kind of excited about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I'm counting on the number 
years. Mm, looks good though. Looks really good. Yeah, I know, but I will find out. Let it sit for a bit. Okay. Okay, so here's the finished product. So this quinoa sausage, lots and lots of vegetables, some mozzarella cheese, and we're having it with our oh, what is it? Cabbage, carrot, red pepper. Radicchio, lettuce, and avocado. Avocado. Excuse me for getting avocado yeah. all the time. With the peanut, um, the peanut dressing on it. So the salad and the casserole. This glass of wine. Are you gonna try it? Is <laughs> <laughs> it ain't good? It's good. Is it okay? Yeah, it's good. Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I just finished putting my skis back in the shed. Proper January weather today. Freaking cold. Got a ton of snow. And uh, we were going to go skiing. We got up to the top of the road our little road to go over just onto the golf course near us and the wind was blowing so hard my skis were oh, I could hardly hang on to them and I'm like I am not doing this today so it's back on the exercise bike for me take one here we are our grits from Charleston, South Carolina. We were introduced to this uh, a number of years ago when we visited the city, and uh, we went on a, a quick tour of the of the city itself, uh, a horse-drawn carriage, and the guide said that grits really are just a, a medium to carry whatever taste you want with it. So for him, cream and butter, he said. <laughs> yeah. Cream, butter, and cheese. <laughs> yeah. We did go out for dinner one night um, near the place that we were staying. It wasn't in downtown Charleston. It was nearby. It's across the bay. Yeah, across yeah. the bay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, um, what we will do is we will first of all take the grits, which is stone ground corn. I, we had no idea what grits really were. The only time I heard about grits was in the Beverly Hillbills. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when they had yeah. uh, possum and grits for supper. Now, in Canada, we might try groundhog and grits. We did see grits at the breakfast buffets on our way driving at some of the hotels. It just looked like white mush to me. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we think, were like, oh my God, what's that? <laughs> Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, that's that's where we were introduced to it, and uh, so we were anxious to try it because the meal we had at the uh, Old Post Inn, yeah, I think, yeah, but I'll check on that. Yeah, and I think that was it. But it was really good, and uh, so we thought we'd try it. This is the third time we've had it. We've had it twice. Shrimp uh, and grits was. Oh yeah, shrimp, shrimp and grits. Yeah. yeah. Now one ad uh, adjustment adaptation that we made to the recipe is we've added. Um, couple of different varieties of sausage. Not very many, uh, chorizo and a, uh, no, hot Italian and a mild Italian sausage. Right. But last time we did chorizo well, and andouille. andouille. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get, well, I could have got the chorizo, but apparently it's, it's hot for me. me. Yeah. Uh, I'm warming up some water and some of this water uh, had uh, some herbs and spices in it. Uh, I put some dried parsley and dried uh, tarragon, some uh, chopped celery leaves, and I just boiled it down uh, in some shrimp water uh, that I saved from boiling down the shrimp. This this was an idea we got from uh, from our visit to Charleston, and it really makes sense. So when I boil... Or boil the I, shrimp I, shells, when right? I, when I take the, the shells uh, off the shrimp, I then boil the shells, and I save the broth. So I put five cups of this mixture in a pot, warm it up, I will add uh, one cup plus a little bit uh, more according to how porridgey I want it. I'm going to cook and stir the grits 
slowly for an hour, <coughs> excuse me, and while that's going on, I'm going to take my <coughs> uh, peppers, mushrooms, shallots, green onions, garlic, and the stir-fried shrimp, uh, and the sausage, and get it prepared for when I do add it to the grits once it's cooked and ready to have those additions put into it. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to the point where the grits are in the stock and uh, we have to stir it and cook it very slowly so it doesn't stick and, and stuff like that. Kind of like risotto. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like bit. risotto. Yeah, yeah it's, it's picky like that. It's not a difficult recipe, but it's uh, you have to be sitting on top of it. I, I, I'm just back from a, a really nice ski this afternoon. It's, it's minus... Yeah, I'm probably minus 20, minus 25 with the wind chill here today, but it was just gorgeous. The, the scheme was amazingly good. Whoop, there goes a... So that makes you a better grits cooker? Oh, yeah. It makes me, it, it pumps me to get ready to cook because now I need a little bit of downtime after. <laughs> Thank God for skiing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Hubby is attending to the grits and getting the bacon started. I'm going to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about the uh, I guess the development of this recipe that we use um, we had shrimp and grits well actually hubby had it I didn't I had something else at the old post in and he loved it so much we decided we wanted to try and and make it when we got home but the recipe from the old post in was just chock full of cream and and tons of cheddar and we were we've been really trying to cut down on the fat and the and the full fat cheese and all that stuff in our diet. So we found this recipe online. Um, I'm trying to find the website. Serious Eats. Anyway, we found this recipe with uh, by Daniel Gritzer. Oh, Gritzer. <laughs> Gritzer. <laughs> anyway, um, in which he explained what he was doing, which was what we wanted to achieve, which was to make a, a healthier shrimp and grits. So he uses a lot of mushrooms, he changes, he cuts down the cheese drastically. Like, So Hubby just reminded me that, not to forget to mention that this is a recipe for, for four servings. So uh, we'll have this for two meals. Nevertheless, he did say the recipe designer of this recipe that he was cutting down drastically on cheese and cream but he had to get uh, uh, enough taste delivered into uh, into the grits so uh, we're using a little bit of butter and a much stronger tasting cheese because that gets that a stronger dairy taste but cuts down on the fat and um, yeah so I guess that's all I wanted to say about that just wanted to tell you that like all good teachers we are <laughs> note takers so this is the original recipe uh hubby's uh he has annotations in blue and some in black and we've noted what we've done different times instead of other times and then um oh yeah we had friends over uh who who had both traveled to charleston and this was for six people, so he wrote out all he needed to do for that recipe. And then we've got this other annotation. And uh, I think it was the other day we had a good laugh because he was trying to figure out what the heck some of the annotation <laughs> meant. Yeah, so yeah, it's an adventure. Okay. Okay, I'm in the process here of taking the crispy bacon out of the the wok. I love cooking in a wok. And uh, I'll keep it warm. I'll wrap it in paper towel and I will get as much of the fat out of it as I can. And once I've done that, I'll take some of the fat out of the wok, most of the fat out of the wok, and I will start to cook the sausage. When I've done that, then we will take, and the grits by that point should be cooked about an hour, I'll make sure that it's liquidy enough, the right consistency. I will put in the uh, butter and the lemon and the cheese, stir it all together, mm -hmm. and then the second portion of the, the process will be done. I'm going to cook now the 
two types of sausages that we use. When do you do the other vegetables? They will be done as soon as I get these um, sausages done. They won't take very long and that will include the shrimp as well. Okay, so stir fry, mushrooms, celery, uh, garlic in some of my mushroom olive oil, peppers, the bacon and sausage are resting, <laughs> and the grits are almost done. Yeah, I put them on pause for a couple of minutes so I catch up here. Okay. So, do you put the shrimp in on top of that stir fry? I'll just move the this off to the side and, and do the shrimp. You, the shrimp will they stir fry so quickly that yeah. won't be a problem. Okay, and then you're going to add the sausage back in. Yep, just for Mix a couple of minutes. Mix it all up. Yeah. Okay. Be ready. Then we'll add the cheese to the cheese and the butter and lemon to the grits. And then we're going to assemble. Okay. Okay. The final product. We've got grits on the bottom, then the stir fried veggies, and some sausage and shrimp, and then sprinkled on top tomatoes, a little bit of fresh basil, uh, chopped green onions, and bacon bits. And bacon bits. Okay. I became the stew chef instead of Sue being the sous chef. <laughs> Okay, well, get that down your neck, as they say in England. <laughs> Let's see what it tastes like. Do okay. you want me to do it on Yes, live on too? camera, on live, God. on my on. YouTube channel. How is it? Oh, it's awfully good, but I think if we had BF Goodrich tenderized possum it might be better <laughs> okay mm. okay enough with jokes i'm gonna eat now back on okay wave to the camera <laughs> he always does what he's told <laughs> so the other night we made grits and we forgot to put the tomatoes in the stir fry but they were still really yummy and we have lots left over so tomorrow night we'll have them again with the tomatoes in eh? Oh yeah. 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 It's one of the things. Three pages of notes. Three pages of notes and we still forgot the tomatoes. <laughs> well we put some on top but not. Yeah so it's three o'clock. This is our one productive thing today. Hey. Well my one productive thing. In the driveway. You cleaned the driveway. We collaborated on making a meatloaf. And that's what we'll have for dinner. And yeah. So what we're doing this month is, you know, reminiscing about some places we've traveled and the cool food that we had. Remember that uh, place in Bosnia? What was the name of that? That town in... Yeah, in Herzegovina. Uh, Ch Chapelana, Chapelana, something like that. And I had Pekka, which is uh, Croatian for cooked under the bell. And it was a stew of veal and vegetables cooked for hours. And, oh my God, it was so good. Now, if we had an appropriate cooking equipment like a bell, we could make that. And it had some kind of dollop of cheese on it. Okay, we gotta move because there's a skidoo coming along the trail. Skidoos are gone. Put my mitten back on. These are my Bernie mittens. But I would like to say that I had my mittens long before Bernie did. And I haven't gone viral yet. So, yeah, so memorable cooking events. Can you think of any? No. Um, well, the grits, of course, we have. We were in, in Carolina, South Carolina. Um, I'm thinking of the Marmite that we had in Yorkshire. Did you have any? I tasted it. Yeah. 
As far as I can see, it's just peace to solve. <laughs> Shh! I know, some people love it. Um, we were staying at this B&B in Boltby, and Diana, our hostess, brought us breakfast the first morning, and she had Marmite, and she said, she had a very lovely upper class English accent. And she said, we well, just give it a little try. And I did, and I was couldn't help myself. I went, Ooh. and she went, tomorrow I shall refrain from putting Marmite on the tray. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was an experience. Okay, we were just reminiscing about fun food experiences when we've been traveling. And Hubby reminded me of when we were in Newfoundland. We, the first few days we were in Newfoundland, um, we stayed with my uncle Allie and my aunt Dee Dee, just outside of St. John's. And they took us to, well they took us somewhere every day, but uh, um, one night for dinner, they took us to a bed and breakfast close to them, which does dinner, so my Uncle Allie and my aunt really love. And anyway, so the waitress came around and asked us if we were ready to order. And my Uncle Allie said, just do, oh, you gotta try the cotta gratin here. It is the best. He goes to the waitress, that's what I'm gonna have, one cotta gratin. No, I said cotta gratin. You did. Yeah. But Uncle Allie said oh. cotta gratin. And you and I kind of looked at each other as if to say, because the menu clearly said cod au gratin. And so, Hubby looked at the waitress and said, well, I will try the cod au gratin as well. And the waitress goes, okay, that's good. Two cod au gratins. <laughs> and we, afterwards we died laughing because Stu felt like a poncy upper Canadian snot nose. <laughs> Snob. A-hole. <laughs> A-hole. Yeah, that was really funny. Which I'm not. Which generally. he's not. <laughs> so anyway, we were staying in Bonavista, the next place I think right after St. John's, and our B&B owner, oh well, he was a hoot, he said, well this evening you gotta head down to the Elliston Fair. Elliston was a root cap root cellar capital of the world and I swear every little old farmhouse had a root cellar in the backyard it was really neat and and he said and you got to have some of your some of your jigs dinner so we were like oh okay because jigs dinner in, in Newfoundland is boiled boiled dinner anyway it was uh, put on by the church ladies and so we get there and they're just cleaning up uh, they've washed all the pots and we're too late for the jigs dinner but over near the beer corral, which was an area, the only licensed part of the fair, where you could stand in amongst all this, like a fence, a wooden, homemade wooden fence, and everybody was standing in there drinking their, their pints. Generally you can see that when Newfie starts drinking, it's better to have them corralled. Corralled, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, but they did have a burger stand. So we went and got burgers and we took them over and stood in the corral and had a pint and ate our burgers and they were really, really good. And it wasn't until, I think it was two weeks later, we were way across on the other side of the island. Oh boy, here comes a skidoo. Ooh. And there he goes. Anyway, we were way across on the other uh, side of the island because we were going to uh, um, do some hiking in Gross Morn National Park. And we were on the, in the lineup to take a, a boat ride up into oh, the, yeah, the fjord, fjord yeah, the inland, inland fjord, fjord, yeah. And there were two guys, Newfoundlanders, standing behind us. And one of them said, oh, we saw you two over in Alliston eating moose burgers a couple of weeks ago. And I said, Wow, we were in Alliston, and we were eating burgers, but <laughs> I chuckled in a superior way. They weren't moose burgers, and <laughs> those guys, they just bent over laughing, and one guy goes, Ah, oh, all that meat is donated. He said, and you want to bet, if you were eating burgers there, 
you were eating moose burgers. <laughs> so funny. And then I felt like a an upper Canadian snot nose snob. Which I'm not. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Now we have to get back to our walk. No more reminiscing. So I hope you enjoyed that. We do love to blither in my house, so it, it was a bit long. I tried to edit out parts. I left out uh, last night's supper, which was uh, hubby's variation on a seafood stew recipe he found with scallops and mussels, shrimp, oysters, potatoes, little baby potatoes, uh, carrots, assorted other vegetables, tomatoes. Oh my God, it was so good. And we made a, a loaf of homemade whole wheat bread and had warm bread with it. Yo, it was so good. That kind of sums up January. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Plus skiing and walking. So yeah, uh, one thing I did want to say was I had a lot of, a couple of recipes with sausage in it. We don't actually eat very much sausage in our house. We try and cut down on the fat. But the day we made the quinoa, I think we'd had chicken and fish and chicken and fish and chicken and fish and, and we were so tired we thought we'd put in uh, uh, a few Italian sausages into that but it really did look like we're kind of you know like sausage people although we are but we try not to be so that was January uh, February beckons and we hope it's a good month I think my face has really been taking a beating this month I noticed in in the, one of the walking videos that um, my face is really my rosacea is really acting up and uh, so I may I may do my next month's vlog on skincare or something a little different besides walking and eating and eating and walking anyway I hope you liked this month's vlog um, yeah so I'll see you next month <laughs>